I really wanted to like this phone. I really, really did. The shameful thing is I do like the phone for the most part. It runs great. The plastic back really doesn't feel that cheap and obnoxious, though it mostly spends its time in a case. And the flat screen is actually really, really nice to have after being afflicted with curved phones for ages, which I, just, I never liked them because of the darkening of the edges and all that. Uh, that's a rant for another day. But the S21 is a huge regression and a place where I feel it's important to me. And that's kind of the whole point of these reviews is I'm going to talk about what's important to me, whereas like Mr. Mobile will talk about what he likes and what is important to him. So let's get into this. The point of this video is, well, we got to go back. We got to go back to the golden age of, well, at least I feel the golden age of Samsung, which is the S8 and S9 era. This is when Samsung started shipping universal phones. Well, actually, that started a little bit before this with the S7, because you had the, like the G930A, which was the S7 on AT&T. And he had the G930T and so on and so forth for T-Mobile. And then Samsung started selling an unlocked version called the G930U. And you could buy that and it worked with everything because I guess the U at that time was supposed to mean unlocked. So you could pop in your Verizon SIM and get Verizon service. You could pop in your AT&T SIM and it would reconfigure itself for AT&T. All that wonderful stuff. It was a truly universal phone. Now some enterprising folks figured out that this was the case for the carrier tainted S7s as well. They were all universal and you could actually flash the G930U software onto a G930T for example and then it would act as if it were a fully unlocked phone, as long as you got it SIM unlocked before you flashed it over from T-Mobile or any other source. So you got full compatibility. It was just pretty much exactly like you just bought it from Samsung. It was a good time. Samsung kind of got in on this too with the S8 onwards because they started introducing a firmware that would auto configure itself based on the SIM that was installed for the carriers that I believe didn't come out till later in its life, but now they gave all the carriers one variant. It was called the G9, I believe the G940U. I, someone will correct me down in the comments, but carrier variants were now U variants, and they switched the unlocked S8 to be a U1. If we actually go over here, I don't know why I'm bothering to cover this up because I don't own this phone anymore and I think it got traded in. But as you can see, this is an unlocked model with the U1 designation. So only the box, not the phone, as I just said. And up until very recently, all throughout, you could still do the same loophole with the S8s. You could grab a carrier S8 that was unlocked. I mean, you could do it without having a SIM unlocked, but that would kind of kill the point of doing this modification. And you could flash with patched Odin, which is Samsung's firmware flashing utility, but it has to be patched to allow this, otherwise it'll just fail. But you could still just flash the U1 firmware onto a carrier S8, S9, going all the way up. And it would act as if you just bought the thing from Samsung and it would work with every carrier, no matter what. Now we come back to the present. I don't know what happened, but as of the Note 20 and S21, Samsung has apparently saw fit to completely close that loophole entirely. You can still flash the U1 firmware, which is actually what I've done with this T-Mobile variant, S21, and it'll give you the unbranded OS and experience, but the thing that controls the carrier configuration behind the scenes of the OS no longer changes. It remains locked to the original carrier. This thing is called a CSC. You can see right here, these are your CSCs. In this case, I'm XAA, XAA, TMB. The last one is one that cannot be changed. That's what your phone came manufactured with. And you can change it if you're rooted, but that's a whole process in and of itself. The other two are the firmware and I believe the SIM card CSCs. We'll get into why this is XAA in a bit. But those do not change when you flash the U1 firmware anymore on the carrier tainted S21s. Now on the old way of doing things, those would change depending on the SIM card you put in. So you could have XAA firmware with a ATT CSC for AT&T, which means you're still on the unlocked firmware, but the firmware behind the scenes is configured to use AT&T services. So it unlocks the AT&T LTE bands and all that wonderful stuff. The problem with the Note 20 and S21 is for some reason, just Samsung just 
doesn't let this happen anymore. It doesn't, it just completely ignores the SIM card when you put it in, and it completely ignores the firmware CSCs, which it used to never do that. And it's really hard to change now. The only way I found to do this for free, because there are paid options for changing it, if you so please, like SamKey, which is what I used at first and blew 10 bucks on it for nothing, because you can change it once, and then if you pop in another SIM card that comes from the originating carrier, and in this case T-Mobile, it just reverts that change and you're back to a locked CSC for T-Mobile in my case here. But the way I found to be able to do this is, well, I didn't find it, someone else found it and I was the unwitting tester for it, is actually flashing the G99XW firmware, which the W model is Canadian and you want the one with the XAC CSC. And what that'll do is it'll kind of fool the phone into thinking that it just I don't know what exactly it does because I think it tries to configure itself for the TMB CSC, but it can't find it in that firmware. I don't know, it's a technical process. I have no knowledge of how it works. So it fools the phone into going to the XAC CSC. And then you flash onto XAA U1 for the U1 firmware from the US, which the XAA model is the unlocked model. You flash that over it, and now you get what I have here, which is an XAA CSC on a carrier tainted S21. And the unfortunate thing is you have to wipe your data every time you do this. And the other unfortunate thing is if I put a T-Mobile SIM in here, it'll blow it all away. Thankfully, you get a chance to get your SIM back out before something happens. It'll prompt you to reboot, but if you get your SIM card out, lock the phone, and when you unlock it, the reboot prompt will be gone, and the phone will no longer be switching back over to T-Mobile. But yeah, it's a really involved process, and it's really just outright dumb, and I don't know why Samsung is taking so long to fix this. Because Samsung does introduce carrier switching firmwares. I don't know why they take so long to do it after the phone has been released, but but they generally do it with the next, next big Android update, which is actually coming soon, apparently. And it allows you to put whatever SIM you want in, and the phone just reboots and auto-configures. But for the S21, no, we don't get that just yet. And that pretty much coupled with all the regressions from the S20 that I've been looking up, like MST, which is a thing for Samsung Pay to work on a traditional card swipe terminal, expandable storage, and the RAM being cut. I don't know, I kind of regret getting this phone. I mean, I got it on a deep discount thanks to trading in my Pixel 4a, but I'm still kind of regretting getting this phone just because this whole soft lock situation is why I thought it was okay to buy Samsung devices from carriers. Because once you get them unlocked, which is the hard part from most carriers, it you have to, I mean, that's, that's really the hard part. You just flash your firmware onto it from the unlocked model and boom, it's like you never even got it from your carrier. Pretty cool. But I guess with the S21 and Note 20, Samsung's just like, no, you get nothing. You, that loophole is now shut, closed, and if you have a carrier locked version, you get to sit and burn. Anyway, yeah, if someone were to come up to me and ask me for, for like a good Samsung phone to get right now, I would advocate for a used S20 over an S21 right about now. Now, kind of sucks because, I mean, this phone is decent. I have no problems with it other than the cell service being wonky because of the aforementioned problems. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like a used S20 is going to be a better value than this thing, which is unfortunate, but uh, what can you say? Anyway, that ends my rant on this phone. So hopefully I saved you some heartbreak or hopefully you liked what I have to say because you're affected by this problem too. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.